<laughs> um, I came for the first interview um, with with Barbara Chambers and Kathy Owen. Um, I think maybe Liz Kaplan. I returned uh, for a second interview. I think that was with um, um, st teachers, uh, faculty, and staff. And then I came back for a third interview, which was quite something that I probably never lived through before. I think there were about 40, at <laughs> least 40 parents, um, teachers. There was a boardroom. I think 16 people sat around the boardroom, a board table, and then there were an additional two rows of people. And there was this young lady from Trenton, New Jersey, going, oh, what is this? <laughs> right? Who is it? What are these folks all about? Um, but just understanding two things. There was a great love for the director who was um, dying of cancer, and also a love for this community that they built um, after the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., a time that they wanted to bring healing to the racial tension that was growing in the community. So I understood, you know, after leaving there, um, interviewing, I understood better what they were looking for and they wanted somebody to step into um, the shoes of Barbara Chambers and um, and really take care of the take care of the program. Susie, how did you get there? I was shopping at Safeway with my baby Zafra, who was three years old and in the shopping cart when Janet Wakala happened to be in <laughs> front of me in the line. Janet ended up working in the office at Columbia Road. I don't know if she did then, but there must have been something about Zafra and I that made her say, Columbia Road Children's Center is where you belong. So I was like, good. <laughs> And I went and enrolled Zafra, and I just, I mean, I had, Zafra was my first child. I, she'd never been in any kind of a setting before. This setting totally fit my aesthetic. I mean, it was <laughs> fun, and the staff was wonderful, and they thought Zafra was wonderful. So, and the potluck dinners on Friday night were wonderful, so I was just happy to send Zafra there. When Zafra left there, it was not so good for her, but I was working at a bank then that hated me. I mean, they hated me. They hated the way I smelled. They hated the way I looked. They hated the way I balanced the books, or whatever you call it at the end of the day in a bank. And I cried every day when I left, literally cried. I mean, people in the neighborhood would say, she sure has a hard way to go. And Judy Byron, a friend of ours, called and said, Susie, there's a white opening at Columbia Road Children's Center. And I drove to Columbia Road Children's Center and walked in the door. And the staff said, why are you here, Susie? Because Zafra had gone on to another school. And I said, I'm here for the white opening. And they said, don't call it that. But there's a teaching assistant opening with Faye, and the, Faye Allen in the fourth four-year-old class. And I was like, cool. And then I went, and I got the job. I mean, I don't even remember being interviewed. The opposite of Paul, I don't sure. think anybody interviewed me at all. I don't think so. I think I just got the job because you were white. I was white. <laughs> and they liked how you smell. <laughs> and my daughter went there. I was part of the community. I mean, I was part of the community. I don't remember any interview at all. And I went and started working with Faye, and Carlos was in the classroom, so it was Faye, Carlos, who's a Bolivian musician, and myself, and it was the most lovely teaching imaginable, so I was just always happy. <laughs> Faye, how did you get there? I was looking for a full full-time job because the job I had with the recreation department only was during the school year and it wasn't extended so I had those summer months free and working at a in a program such as Columbia Children's Center um, would be all year and a friend of mine said um, they're interviewing so I should try and of course yes when I went I was somewhat like oh, because there was a whole round table of persons interviewing. So you had teachers, um, 
Carlos was already there and was going to be my teacher's aide. So he was part of the interviewing team and parents and what have you, and they interviewed me. And I remember Carlos saying, that's a real teacher, right? <laughs> and he didn't know how I would fit in the room being a real teacher because in that particular room, I think they had most artists in the room. So um, here comes a real teacher who is going <laughs> to... So, but I did get the job, and of course, it was a great experience. And Carlos figured out that it was okay to be with a real teacher. Mm -hmm. We had a good time. Paulette, was it difficult to supervise these two? <laughs> yeah, not, not at all. Actually, what yes. made the, um, the job at Columbia Road Children's Center um, just a lovable experience because I trust what was going on in the classrooms. I trust the folks who manage the children, who work the curriculum with, with and for the children. So I think it was relatively an easy job in that, in that sense. And because of their personalities, it, it was also easy to work with them. So yeah, I love, I, I love the experience there. Um, I think what was difficult was when they left to pursue other things, you know, so it's like, you left me here alone, you know. Um, and of course, through the years, we hired on new people who were further away from the history of the school and why we operated the way we did. So that was became more of a challenge once these ladies left, left the school. Mm. Can you all talk a little bit about the history of the school? Yeah, why was it founded? Sure. Um, yeah, I found you guys there, so we'll <laughs> talk about that. It was founded right after the, assa the assassination, the murder of Dr. Martin Luther King and the riots. So as I know the history, a group of parents, many in Cleveland Park, but wanted their children to have a healing experience where children of diverse backgrounds and races and ethnicities came together to learn so that they would know and understand each other. And that was the thinking. So I think it's real important because as I understand it, parents who had more wealth financed the school to a way so that parents who didn't have that kind of income could have their children attend Columbia Road Children's Center too. And so there was that, the white opening had to do with the, the conscious ratio of one third white, one third African American, one third Latino. And different socioeconomic mm -hmm. groupings. So it, if a parent had, if a person had one child and could possibly give a scholarship to a second child. That's what happened. So, so kids from different socioeconomic groupings could also be there. Was there any public funding? Was there any government funding? I think um, early years there probably was less of it and became more of it as mm -hmm. the issue of a multicultural, um, different kind of school community changed. Um, as a community changed as well, I think we saw um, the, I wouldn't call it white flight because they were already in their communities, but I think as their children moved away from the school, um, I don't think people came back in the same numbers. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as the, I think as the imbalance, I guess I would feel comfortable in saying as the, the balance of racial um, groups changed, you know, we had more Hispanic, Latinos, more blacks, and fewer whites, and we kept seeing seeing that change. Because again, people want to feel like they're putting their children in a program that represents them, that looks like them. And as we were losing funding, I would say, um, that would also change in the kind of teachers that you would uh, attract as well. So yes. Peas and rice. Peas and rice and um, tortillas and 
Oh, you know. Everything. Everything. <laughs> I mean, Maybe we do plantains. And, plantains. Yeah, in mean, addition to spaghetti and meatballs yeah. and mm -hmm. chicken and things mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Again, that was trying to appeal to the palates of young children in trying out various foods, foods that their classmate. Did it also work? Enjoy. Oh, yes. It did. It worked. And it did work. The kids loved vegetables I mean you know loved them and there was always yeah. vegetables and kids mm -hmm. did and plus those the community thing is true that it was a community so often at least once a month but probably more than once a month there would be a gathering of the whole community around food mm -hmm. at night in the evening you know so the parents would be there and There'd be music and there'd be food. And if it was potluck, that was another opportunity yes. to try different kinds of foods. It was often potluck, and the food was incredible. Oh, I mean, yeah. yummy. So, how about the story you told about the rabbit's house? Tell oh, well, it talking about the stories and 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 how we use it. It's one story that we talked about was. Who's in Rabbit's house? And it's um, supposed to be an African tale, yeah. mm -hmm. but it is uh, the story is about a caterpillar being in the rabbit's house, and the rabbit thought it was a lion or something bigger. And because the noises this thing made, he disguised his voice. <laughs> yes, <laughs> would make them think so. So yes, I could read the story with the emphasis in in, but Susie at the end of the year because the kids love this story, so we we read it over and over and over. But at the end of the year, what happened? Susie um, created you know masks and paper plate masks and what have you, and <laughs> and the kids could act out the story. And for for parents and and Carlos put music to it, so it was things like that. This is an African tale that we fixed and joined and and made it fun for everybody, mm -hmm. and uh, and the whole school because end of the year we used to have mm -hmm. um, put on a show or for mm -hmm. better word <laughs> for for. I think More even a few times a year we would do put on for families and friends of families. So parents brought their friends to see their kids perform. Who doesn't like to see kids perform? <laughs> you know, all the parents love. <laughs> so they would come in and they would do all these dances, all these mm -hmm. um, what Carlos would play. And, and other people. It wasn't just Carlos. Right. There were other people from the community that played music and Carlos would have his little band together, and they would sing and dance. And, uh -huh. and, and But in addition to that, in, in terms of thinking about the curriculum in the community, that there was, you know, the fire department, the, the post mm -hmm. office, restaurants, but wherever we could visit with children in the community, um, you know, you would see Columbia Road children walking through the streets, <laughs> um, which, again... For a child who doesn't live in that community, you know, you can see how your neighbor, Ricardo, this is his community, mm -hmm. um, so let's walk and see what it looks like over here. And it's, it's, it's and come back and do an experience chart. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. What you saw, so what, you what did you yeah. What did you see, what did you hear, and then we would write it, put the child's name next to it, so that's their first way of starting to read. So they could read what somebody else wrote for them but they they had their little experience charts going had their little books ready and so so it was just blending everything in it's it's not just what's in the book but blending it all in and it worked it worked really well <laughs> it did I can say that when Zafra went on to other schools that were not I didn't send her to D.C. public schools because I was afraid of that, right. given who I was. Uh -huh. and those, but those other schools were not as welcoming. They were alternative schools, but they were not as nourishing and welcoming. Uh, Where was your school located? Where was Columbia Road Children's Center? 1470 Center? Irving Street, Northwest. Mm -hmm. And what was that? It was Wilson that Center. 
which it, had been a Presbyterian, Presbyterian church. Presbyterian church, yeah. Part. Presbyterian church, yeah. I think, eventually sold it to... Um, Charter. As, for a dollar. For yeah. years, we had been trying to get the property, but they were holding on to it. Yeah. But, but the Wilson later. Center is where, you know, many leftist groups mm -hmm. worked, had offices. Mm -hmm. oh, was that the same building you were in? Yeah. Yes. Joe, yeah. you know, Merrick was there, Phil Wheaton's. Mm -hmm. Middle Health. East Reports. Mm -hmm. Health Center was there, mm -hmm. a woman's health center. I mean, there were a number of things going on in terms of, again, taking care of the community, mm -hmm. being um, supportive to the community, mm -hmm. and How? the broader community, I should say. Yeah. How many children were there? I, when I came to the school, I think we were about 55, 52, 55, something like that. I think now they're 250. Yeah. Wow. And we, went, we, we grew a lot because our room ended up with 24 children. Mm -hmm. And we started, when we started, when we first started, we had like 18. Mm. And then, so, every, and everybody grew. But basically, we grew from bottom up. Because I, when we had 24, we, um, we had early, early fours and then fours. Mm -hmm. so, so we started to have, like, because of the developmental ages, yeah. we had some split things that we had to do. But, yeah. We grew How many grades fast. did you go up? Just kindergarten. Up to kindergarten. Uh, through kindergarten? Yes. Not first grade, though. Not no. first grade. So it was preschool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let me ask, nowadays it, there's, a, there's a lot of um, right-wing criticism about intentional diversity. Hmm. You were all, I'm asking, but you all seem to have felt... Uh, that it was easy to accommodate a principle of racial, ethnic, economic diversity. It, I'm asking, did it ever feel strained, or did it just feel like, well, it's about damn time? It's, it felt <laughs> yeah, very it's natural to children. <laughs> yeah. Very. And it felt natural to me. It felt like who I was and what I wanted, so, for my children and for myself, so. I, I don't know. I... What I don't Colum remember. But Columbia Road Children's Center was pretty special for that reason. You walked in, and even though when you when I first went out, like okay, let's see what happens here, but you walk in and you were welcomed. There wasn't any. I didn't feel anybody that says why is this person here or it, it's. You just walked in and you were welcome. It was basically what gift do you bring us? <laughs> and so you, you walk in and you share your gifts and, and you, you supported each other and you did what you needed to do. Um, and as Paulette says, you know, you, you could trust and respect people and, and it worked. I mean, you, uh, my younger child was already in maybe third grade, second or third grade at the time, and and would be so would be at Barbara Chambers quite often after school. After school, after school, he would because he went to neighborhood public school, so he could walk to Barbara Chambers after school, and it, with him or with other staff kids that walked there after school, they became part of that, to mm -hmm. read stories to a child, mm -hmm. to act out something, to play a game with a child. They, it taught them a whole lot of responsibility mm -hmm. that here are some younger children that we could, we could read a story to. You didn't come here to just run around and right. make... And it was very natural to them. It was very they natural. They come in after school and they, and they hung out. That was their place. They'd yes. help out. They, they, you know, play mm -hmm. with the children on the playground, yeah. read stories. It was like they grew up there and they came back. Yeah. They had their early child experience, and they came yeah. back. But or they came after school, whatever. They were just yeah. part of that community. I would also like to say that Paulette was an incredible administrator. Yeah. <laughs> that when I got the job, people around the city were kind of hoping that I would unionize daycare workers. 
and probably by the third staff meeting, I just looked at everybody because she really was so skilled at helping us understand how to communicate as a group and or just how to communicate with each other and how to be amicable and how people have quirks and how to respect those quirks. She was so good at that and I, I was learning so much. It was so exciting that I kind of remember standing up and saying, I was supposed to unionize us, but there is <laughs> nothing wrong with this administration, so I won't be leading the union struggle here. <laughs> Do you remember that photo? Yes, I do. I remember that photo. Yes. Did you know there was an effort to unionize? Yes, yeah, I did. I did. Um, I had an administrative assistant who um, we, we love dearly. She is no longer with us, but she was about workers' rights. Oh, yes. You know, and wanting to make sure that things were in place for everyone. So. She's the one that brought me there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. I want to ask you a question that you referred to before is uh, how, how did the kids from Columbia Road School compare with other kids in the metropolitan area? You said you visited different schools and uh, tried to... Uh, well, I, when we, we, went out, we, went, we went out looking to see did our, our children meet meet the grades or were, or were we preparing them because we were we saw ourselves as a bit different from from most in that we weren't sitting at the table and reading and we writing really and, 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 and thing we we saw saw what we did we did most in, of what we did in play and stuff yet we had one kid I can remember that left us reading in three languages. I'll never forget her. She she because she had a she had a um, child care person that was Spanish speaking. Uh, I think her mom spoke French, mm -hmm. and then English in the classroom. And anything she read in English, she also read in French and Spanish. So. So but we wanted to anyway be sure mm -hmm. that that was that our kids were prepared when they left us at kindergarten. Were they ready for first grade? Were they ready to move on? Because now they will have to sit still in a chair <laughs> or a bench or what have you. But when we went out and looked. And Marcel de Govaya, um started that looking. And when we went out and looked, we saw that we were way above. Because our kids were reading at four years old. Mm -hmm. And they were well prepared. And, and if they knew, <coughs> Marcel was bent on them knowing when you talk about vegetables, it's not just broccoli and but what happened to the greens, colored greens? So the wide range, they knew it's the, a banister is a banister, but in some houses we don't have banisters. And she used to say that, well, what are the tests? Because, you know, when they left and went out, they had some tests they had to do. And you're as, and on, I'll never forget Marcel saying, you know, that test says, what do you cover with when it rains? Now, some of our children cover with um, plastic bags and newspaper. Mm -hmm. So now we need to bring some raincoats and stuff in here, and, and we need to hang it up. And let, some, let all the kids know that you can cover with newspaper and plastic bags, but you can also cover with rain caps and raincoats and umbrellas. So that was what you looked at so they were well prepared well prepared they were reading they know they knew all they needed to know to be in first grade and beyond so it worked it worked just fine and as Paulette just said we were play-based mm -hmm. so so that worried Marcel for a little bit there <laughs> So are we playing too much here? But they were prepared and beyond. Will you, will you tell us more about Marcel? Uh, Mar 
Marcel. <laughs> Marcel was a teacher, and she grew she, up in the British. She system. grew up in the British she was system. From Trinidad. And from Trinidad, and grew up in the British system, and really felt like what happened. Are we playing too much? Do we need to sit down and we need to listen? And do we have to follow everything to the book? But. But yes, she could play and she could and she learned how. And so that's why she did that. It was important for her to go out and do that research so she could be sure that she was preparing her children because she was the kindergarten teacher. So she was going to make, make sure they were prepared when they left her room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they were more than prepared by the mm -hmm. time they got to her room. So right. it, it, it wasn't so hard. But yeah, so they we were ready. Right. <laughs> Do you have any favorite memories of the school? Any favorite incidents? I wouldn't say necessarily favorite, but I certainly saw how the children enjoy the musical environment. That gathering time was real important. You know, our administrative assistant was from West Virginia and she had such a wonderful twang. <laughs> and so she would bring songs, Carla would bring songs, and then there you have your traditional early childhood songs. But the whole gathering time, you could feel the joy and the energy from children and teachers. Mm -hmm. Was that every day? What did we did we go out and sing every day or yeah. sometimes during the week? I think it was maybe once a week that we once all week. did all together. together. Yeah, what well, happened we did in every classroom, that. but then when we got yeah. together as a full community, you just sort of felt the the strength and the power and the yeah. and the voices when we all bellowed yeah. together. So. Do you remember any songs? Can we go out on a song? Feliz Navidad. <laughs> no, it wouldn't be that one. <laughs> it wouldn't be that one. Mm -mm. That's the one I can remember so oh, clearly. Freight Train was one of the Yes, places. yes. Do you remember that song? Freight Train, Freight Train, 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 train going, going so fast. fast. Right. Yeah, but that was one of the favorites. Oh, that is the same. I wish I knew we remember the word. Mm -hmm. I don't Hello. care what train I'm on. <laughs> so don't tell what train I'm on so they won't know no, where I'm bound. Um, right. right. Yeah. Yes. I'm sorry. You know, you're no, talking ladies in their 70s. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well into their 70s. Right. I forget these that things. was Janet's song. Yeah, that was mm -hmm. Janet's song. That was Janet's song. Janet's song. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Can you talk a little bit about... Your graduates of the school, not all of them, there must be hundreds, but no. what some of the kids from that went through the school mm. did. Hi. Your daughter, other people's kids, you know? Well, my daughter is working for the Justice Department, uh, and she travels for her job. She's help working on um, prisoner reentry programs for the Justice Department. But she also loves to travel. She lives to travel the world. Mm. Sala Patterson um, married an Italian man who ran a resort in Brazil, <laughs> and she travels to Africa. To she travels. She works out of Rome and Paris half the time. So she's she's an Joseph, international. She's an internationalist. Joseph F. Hannon is clearly an internationalist. He lives all, I mean, he's well, all, over, all over the world. All over the world. On good so, lefty things. Yeah, mm -hmm. good lefty things. But Asia, Australia, South America, Canada. So, um... Yeah, like, we, had, we, we had a lot of lawyers out of that, out of our groups. Um... Doctors, um, they all are doing well. <laughs> they all are international people and the, civic minded. Civic, civic yeah, minded. Civic That's minded. What's the, important. the young lady that I that I said was reading in three languages. She's an international lawyer also, mm -hmm. and so 
she had just moved back she was named some i can't remember so i can't i can't keep up and just moved back to the area recently mm -hmm. so uh, many of the kids that we that have kept up with us or we have kept up with mostly they kept up with us um are doing well and they are still that kind of a person that welcomes mm -hmm. other people in and and mm -hmm. you know so, so it's, yeah. it's 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 Sawa's brother is an ESOL teacher in Montgomery County, but he got a law degree and mm -hmm. realized that he's happier teaching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well. Mm -hmm. well, the wrap-up question here <laughs> is, how did this experience that you all had at Columbia Road School affect the rest, of your, the rest of your life? Do you feel like you've changed because of it? Are you more the person you were because of it? Are you... I would say for me personally, coming from um, leaving New Jersey and coming to Washington in itself was a huge move. Um, coming into the school where you establish and maintain relationships um, across the board, I think help make the person that you are or bring it out more. I would say when I moved here, I was probably more on the shy side side as an administrator. I think Columbia Road Children's Center helped me to grow and being more confident around um, the education of young children, uh, more available to allow people, as Faye would say, let them do their thing. Um, so I would say, in that regard, I think it, it really helped to grow me. You know, for me, um, coming from the West Indies, coming from Jamaica in particular, at that point in time, I had no idea what this social atmosphere here was. I, I, it was just all new to me, very new. Um, when did you move here? What year? 66. And so it was all new and it was just different. Um, so there was a lot for me to learn. And I think that it was a good thing for me to be at Columbia Road because had I not had Columbia Road's experience, I would be thinking of the United States a lot differently. The melting pot at Columbia Road mm -hmm. helped me to know that it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's it's okay. You can you can really feel fit into a melting pot here in the United States. You know, mm -hmm. I'm coming from a, a melting pot home. It was only money that made a difference where I come from. So it was mm -hmm. to come and hear the stories and read the stories would have been so different. It's the time when universities people are sitting in and doing this and doing that when I came. So, and I thought at the time when I came, how can people in university get all those rights to be sitting in like that and doing this and changing that? So it was a whole different world for me. So it was good to go to Columbia Road and see that it's okay. Yeah. Mm. It's okay and it's okay to be part. Broadens your horizon. Yeah. Broadens mm. your experience yes. um, greatly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I came from the civil rights movement back to D.C., so as I became a parent, it was the most natural place for me to be. It was the most comfortable place to be. And maybe because I had never had another child and put another child in it, I thought that's what education should be. You know, I might have taken it for granted then that mm. we'd... But as the years went on, I really saw what a treasure. But the relationships there that I had with the staff. Sorry, Susie. Oh, That's good. okay. Sorry. Relationships with the staff have just fed me for the rest, for my whole life. They really have. That's and you've been good friends because of that. Oh, yes. Yeah. We're getting yeah. into it. <laughs> right. 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 it is. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I don't think I would have become a teacher if I hadn't had such a good experience. And 
becoming a teacher enabled me to get my daughters through college. So, <laughs> Well, thank you. In other conversations, we'll be talking to some of the graduates of Columbia Road School, correct? Yeah. Yes. Yes.